Hey guys, how you doing this evening? Um, it's been a couple of days since I did any sort of uh, RC um, fiddling or playing or driving or anything like that. So um, Sunday evening, what better thing to do than to prep my new shell ready for paint. So a couple of things to point out. Um, this is my preferred method. Everybody has their own way of painting things. Um, so you know do do a bit of research watch a few videos on youtube or you know happily follow my guide um so i have i've ordered this um clear body shell which matches the defender body that i'm already using um but i wanted to use my own colors obviously so that it's not something that everybody at the track has got um the shell does come with all of the uh the extra you know when they mold it um the arches and everything will be filled in um, so I've made a start on cutting out roughly uh, using some special Lexan scissors the reason I use those is because they're super sharp um, and if you try and cut it with anything uh, that is blunt then it will split the body shell rather than actually cut it so keep your eyes peeled for those special cutters um, you can get straight ones and curved ones I would say for doing these small models you probably don't need the straight ones so just get yourself a set of curved ones okay so um part of the prep is to obviously get it all cut out this does come with a protective film over the top so usually lexan you paint on the inside but i've seen quite a few guys doing uh, scale crawlers that paint on the outside um, because it's easier to do the weathering etc so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint it on the inside uh, and then I'm going to see how it comes out um, and if I'm not entirely happy then I'll paint it on the outside because I do want a bit of a sort of authentic um, roughed up look but I can always rough up the outside just to suit so preparations um, is to cut it out carefully um, any little trimming you want to do you can do with a Dremel but keep it very very slow on the speed on the Dremel um, I don't know if you can see but there's a telltale line in these arches so I just need to go around them a little bit more with the Dremel I need to put a smaller diameter um, Dremel sanding disc on just to sort of keep them tidy um, and then you know if you've got the model you can probably compare it with the cutting uh, to the original I have trimmed mine quite a bit because I've modified the uh, the bumper mounts and things like that um, so you, you know you can have a bit of a play around with that but it's all down to personal preference um, next thing to do is to wash it really well um, use a very small amount of soapy water to wash the inside out obviously if you're painting on the inside and don't forget you've got all of the little details and corners and things like that um, get in there and then rinse it with plenty of um, I would use very very lukewarm water the reason being is because if you have it too hot you'll probably end up washing this outer um, protective layer off and the whole reason for that protective layer is uh, all of the overspray that you get um, you can then once you peel off you you should peel off all of that overspray with it and you'll end up with a nice shiny finish so first step cut out do your sanding make sure you're happy with that and then uh, I'll be back later and I'll show you a very brief um, bit of video of me cleaning the inside and then roughing it up with a scotch bright. Okay, cheers guys. Okay, so the next step is um, cleaning the shell. Now you can do two things at once here. If you use one of these uh, green scourer or brillo or whatever, scratch pad you want to call it, um, you want to try and key up the inside of the body shell because it's really really smooth so you want something that the paint's going to adhere to so if you get your get your pad get a small amount of soap on it you really don't need very much at all get some water on there just so you get a few bubbles going and then just lightly key up the inside of your shell now some of you might be saying why am i doing my windows as well well I like to use like a window tint um, finish on my windows. I don't like to see through to see the electrics and I'm not going to be putting a, um, any sort of interior obviously because it's too, it'll be too heavy. 
So by using this green pad on the inside, just to, just to confirm that, um, I'm keying up the surface. So I'm conscious I go one way with the with the pad and then go the other way just to get an even key all the way around. And don't go mad, don't put loads of pressure on. Um, but just try and remember where you've been, just so you make sure you go around all of it and sort of places that you know are going to get a bit um, more warm than others, like wheel arches and places like that. Then you know, make sure you get in with your with the Brillo pad or the Scourer uh, Scotch Bright, because um, honestly, the more time you spend prepping the shell better the finish will be at the end and this is definitely um, a good little trick that I've learned um, I've done some small shells like this I've done lots of tent shells I've done some big one fifth so I used to race one fifth and they're all exactly the same in that if you paint them on the inside then preparation is key so there I think I've got it all um, just give it a bit of a rinse out make sure you haven't got soap and stuff in the corners that's why I say just use a real small amount of soap um, when you can't even tell there's been any soap in there now which is good um, try and avoid touching it with your hands once it's dry because the oil from the skin will stop the paint adhering give it a really good rinse out give it a rinse on the outside as well because if you've got dust and stuff from um, doing the dremeling then that's going to get into your paint finish and just have a quick look around if there's any areas I'm always conscious of wheel arches and places like that because they do take quite a bit of a, a bashing so just give them a bit of an extra key up and you don't want it so you can really sort of see that you've been aggressive with it because um, believe me the the, um, the scratches will be there um, but hopefully you won't be able to see them so just one last rinse out before the next stage which is going to be masking now again some people are quite traditional they like to use masking tape um, just put those taps off so there you go body's all keyed up and I think you can just probably just about see that um, that that's had a bit of a keying up. You can see the scratches. Well, it sounds terrible, doesn't it, really? But but that's a good sign. If you can see them um, a little bit that you've done it, that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, next step next step will be applying uh, what's called liquid mask, um, and I'll explain exactly what that is when we get to it. Okay, cheers. Okay, so um, the next step in the painting of the shell. Um, we're still on prep at the moment and prep is the most important part of painting a body I don't care what anybody says um, if you don't take the time to prep your body then you won't end up with a good finish so so far we've um, we've cut out and we have uh, cleaned and I've used a green scotch bright to um, mark up the inside so that we get a good adherence of paint um, now the next step, which is masking, um, lots of people will use different methods. The two main ones that I know of are um, the conventional masking tape, which on a body of this size, I think is gonna be incredibly fiddly. Uh, so I've opted for the other option, which is this stuff, which looks like marshmallow, um, which is called liquid mask. Now, I've used this really successfully with some bigger body shells. So I'm hoping uh, that I'm going to get the same good results with uh, with this. Um, the advantage of using this liquid mask is that all of these tight areas around here, you can get a really good mask in there. Um, and actually, if you follow the correct procedures, it's really easy to unmask with. You just have to plan ahead a little bit. Um, use a, an incredibly sharp, I would recommend a brand new, what they call an X-Acto knife or um, a, a very fine scalpel to cut out afterwards so that you keep your lines nice and clean but um, but yeah it's worked for me really really well 
Uh, start with your dark colours as well. So what you do is you, um, I'll just show you. So get a small amount of this liquid mask on. It's got the consistency of PVA. And then what you do is you just brush it on. Don't brush it on too thickly. So if you get, just put a little bit on like I have here. And then keep brushing it out until it literally goes to nothing and make sure you get into all the little areas um, around corners uh, any sort of little details make sure you get inside um, make sure you avoid touching the inside of the body shell as well when you're moving it about um, and you want to be looking at adding about three coats of this I would say and between coats you obviously have to let it dry um, I do speed it up by putting it in the airing cupboard and um, some people don't recommend that but um, I have used it lots of times before and I've never had a problem with doing that. The only thing I have found is if you're doing lots and lots of coats, if you end up painting lots of um, coats of paint over the same bit of liquid mask, um, I don't know if it affects the, the mask or the paint, the chemicals in the paint affect the mask but it can make it quite difficult to peel off but if you follow my steps of three very uh, liberal coats then you should be fine it's coloured pink this one and this one's made by a company called Bitty Design they do a lot of paint products um, it does dry clear but the reason it's pink is so that you can see where you've painted it on doesn't matter if you get a little bit of overpaint onto the outside of the shell, but like I said, put it on liberally and then um, it makes the finish much better. The other thing you need to make sure is that you, you, you do cover each coat, you cover everything because if you don't, um, when you peel off, it won't peel off correctly uh, and then obviously it will make it difficult for you to correctly mask up whatever it was you were trying to mask so try not to get too much in the corners if you get it in the corners then just use your brush pick it up again and then and distribute it somewhere else if you imagine trying to sort of paint um, with PVA glue to be fair it's, it's exactly like that I mean you, you probably could even use PVA glue I don't know but um, this is a quite a big pot of this that I've got and I've had it for donkeys um, and I know some very good painters that recommend this as well so I've opted to, to stay with the liquid mask and make sure like I said you get all these little detailed areas and use the tip of the brush to push it into the corners and like there if you can see it's bubbled up there so just brush it out um, and use that excess somewhere else you can keep going over make sure you don't get your brushes falling out uh, bristles falling out of your brush as well into it and when you finish try and get lots of lines in the PVA all going in the same sort of direction um, and then the next layer that you put on you can finish with them going in the in the opposite direction so 90 degrees to what you've just put down it, it is going to be a little bit fiddly doing a shell this size because obviously you've got areas that are not easily accessible um, but you know if you if you look at the outside it looks awful but believe me when it's done it, it is so much easier than trying to use masking tape if you were painting on the outside and doing lots of straight lines um, I would use masking tape every day but this is so much easier honestly um, and then as I said try and keep the lines all in the same direction when you're finished and then when you paint the next one you can obviously paint it at 90 degrees to make sure you've got good coverage around the edges make sure you get right up to the edges because this is your mask, you're not adding anything else to this and then wipe up all that excess from in those little crevices and you can you can use it on the, the big open bits if you've got a, like there's a 
hinge there. Just poke the end of the brush into it. Don't worry too much if it doesn't look like you've got 100% coverage. Don't start wanging on loads more um, of this liquid mask because you're, you will obviously be covering it again in the next layer. Right, there we go. So just make sure it's all well covered. And after a couple of minutes, you can actually start to feel it going off. It, you feel resistance on the brush. Look out for those areas that are. It's it's gone a bit um, too thick, or it's clumping up, because like I said, it it will actually make it when you start cutting. It makes it quite difficult um, because you're sort of relying on the constant resistance of the the blade um, into it and you know if you get bits that are quite thick then the blade will be slowing down sorry slowing down and speeding up um, and it can really make it difficult to get uh, get nice clean edges which again I've found with this liquid mask um, better than tape definitely for intricate bits on the inside so there we go so there we go I'm just going to finish up here because I can feel this starting to go and I don't want it to start um, going lumpy so I'm just going to make sure that it's all covered it doesn't really doesn't matter if you only get a very thin layer on the first coat but try and make sure that you get absolutely everywhere all these corners Especially bits around where you're going to cut out in the first um, first colour. So there we go. So that's the first layer, all done. I am going to leave that there. I'll probably go and get a hair dryer and give that a bit of persuasion to dry because I'm a little bit impatient like that. I'd like to get this painted tonight, um, so I can show you guys how it looks. Okay. Okay. So we have our. Um, body shell that's now got three coats of liquid mask and as you can see um, the pink dye in it does help to make it stand out it's still a little bit um, wet at the top there but I'm not going to be working around that area so not too fussed so the areas that I'm going to be cutting are the wheel arches um, the front headlight surrounds and grille um, these little vents on the bonnet um, and I think I think that's it everywhere else is going to be another colour so um, I always prefer to use a round knife um, reason is if you're trying to cut around a shape you can actually you can hold it and roll it in your fingers like you would a pen um, and obviously it won't matter if you're left or right handed um, the handle allows you to have a good control of it um, and as I said it's a good idea to have a new blade in there now pressure wise you're going to have to experiment with pressure but it doesn't take much at all if I'm honest um, it's not going to be it's not going to be very easy for me to show you but another good thing to do is like I said earlier because you want to start and finish um, in one go or certainly on the same line is to do it in as many uh, in as few contacts as you can so as I said like if I was cutting out this um, hinge just here it's quite small and intricate but you'd want to take it nice and steady and then as you go try and roll the blade round in your fingers um, but probably best to do it as two sort of C shapes it's always easier working towards you because you can see where you're going to cut rather than where you have cut um, so I'll, I'll have an attempt here so I'm really not putting much pressure at all and then you'll feel the resistance of the liquid mask and then you want to sort of turn it as you go and there's no rush 
So just get to a point and then turn the model but keep the blade very loosely on the on the body and then just as, as many cuts as you can do drawing towards you try and do that because it's going to be easier there you go and then it, I'll go the other way take it nice and slow rolling it round and I'm not a professional and I don't expect a showroom condition finish and then just finish there um, and what you'll find is when you go to if you use the the knife just to peel it can you see that how it's peeling it's it's literally just like PVA um, and that's why I was saying you must make sure that you start and finish on a cut line because otherwise you'll you'll peel it all up so there you go um, I think you can just about see from the outside and if it's not enough then you can just go around it again so I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with me cutting all of these out um, but I will cut the door hinges the bonnet hinges these vents um, the front grille and headlight surrounds and then the wheel arches okay and then I'll I'll uh, once I've cut it all out I'll come back to you guys so I have um, done all of the unmasking that I would like to do so I'm not going to touch the body but you can see I've chosen to do the wheel arches the um, rock sliders door hinges uh, bonnet vents and the whole front grille um, you could be really intricate and do the lights and everything but like I say I'm, I'm probably going to use the stickers on the outside because they look quite cool I'm going to trim around the edges so that you don't end up with all the sort of overlap of the, the clear stuff so that's that stage so it's now almost ready for paint what I tend to do now is to um, I'll put this somewhere warm for 10 minutes just to warm the body so that you're painting warm-ish paint onto a warm body because um, I find it adheres a lot better um, but when you do the first couple of coats you, you haven't got to paint this in two passes you literally want the lightest misting um, if you do very light misting for two or three coats then um, let, let that dry or help it along with a hair dryer which is what I do um, it will bond to the body a lot better but also you won't end up with paint runs and things like that so um, I will I'm going to go and warm my paint so I'm going to leave this under this lamp for a bit just to warm through and then I'll uh, come back and hopefully it should have a couple of very thin layers of black on there yeah, so as you can see there very fine misting of black that I've laid down so far so I'll give that a few minutes to to dry off a little bit and then I shall give it another couple of coats okay guys uh, as you can see you've probably guessed my theme by now um, I use the Tamiya colors the PS paints which are available from lots of good stockists uh, for polycarbonate um, so it's three different colours used, black, yellow and black window tint. Um, I'll probably give that another coat. I've not decided what to do with the windscreen yet, so I've left that one on. But basically, um, this is the best part of any spray job. And this is when you get to peel off the outer mask. So bear with me. Um, there's still going to be some bits and bobs that I'm going to probably paint on the outside um, just for a bit of weathering and stuff like that but it's going to take a bit of a bashing so I'm not going to go too mad also I want to cut the front lights to suit and uh, see how that goes I always love doing this bit bit sad but there you go so as you can see it's obviously got a lot better finish once you peel the the mask off 
and as I said I used the liquid mask on the inside um, I did rush this to be honest but I'm not very patient like that so if you wanted to take your time you could probably do a better job than I've done but it's going to get used it's going to get abused and there you go I think that's going to look pretty cool once it's all finished on there obviously I need to make the holes for the body posts um, and I've got some decals coming um, which will obviously look quite good and I need to spray out the wheels which will be a job for last thing this evening so there you go um, fairly simple straightforward paint job if anybody's got any questions then drop them in the comments below thanks very much